So this is our uh, newbie bloggers group when we talk about how to create and monetize a blog. And so I'm going to ask a couple of questions. Um, uh, Carolyn, you first. Do you already have a blog? No, I don't have a blog. I've just been thinking about it. And okay. um, I really didn't have any clue as to how to start one, uh, even if I was interested. And this this series has been really helpful for me. Okay. Now, how long uh, have you been tapped in? I mean, have you gone through several sessions with us now, Carolyn? Uh, this is the third one, I think, right? Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Okay. I'm going to bring Linda up. Linda just tapped in. And Michelle, how about you? Do you have uh, an actual blog yet? Yes. I just launched the blog yesterday. And so oh, okay. it's not monetized or anything. <laughs> okay. So but you, but you are started. Yes, I I did my welcome post, <laughs> but okay. I haven't done anything. I haven't even thought about monetizing because I'm, I'm trying to just do the basics, and I don't know how easy or hard it is to do the monetization. So I was a little bit, you know, it's kind of new for me, so it's a little scary at the same time. <laughs> I understand completely. I get it. I get it. Um, I'm gonna look up my volume here and see if I can move my volume up. I can you guys hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, I had my volume down for some reason, so now I can hear everybody really well. Um, welcome, Linda. Linda is going to be my co-host, my co-mod today, and uh, uh, she's already kind of monetizing on her end, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I made her my co-host in case I get bumped off the call. For some reason, Verizon added a new tower here in uh, in, in in the area, and now all, uh, th those of us that had a strong signal before, we have a lesser signal for whatever reason. So I think they went broader instead of stronger. So every so often I get a little uh, banner that comes across my screen that says my Wi-Fi is unstable. So anyway, here we are. <laughs> and so oh, so here's a rule for all of you. If you're going to do any kind of a Zoom call, make sure you have a co-host or a co-mod so they can let you back in if you get bumped out. <laughs> make sure you always make somebody your co-host or co-mod. Um, we're going to talk about blogging in general at first. Now, I know Carolyn's been with us a couple of times. Michelle, have you been on uh, with us a couple of times already, or is this your first time tapping in? This, this is my first time. Okay, okay. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview uh, to begin with, and you can kind of see where you are in the in the process. So number one, you have to come up with your blog name, of course. And uh, Michelle, you said you just launched. And Carolyn, do you have a blog name that you're thinking or no? Carolyn, are you there? She may have had to step away. So the first thing to do is to create your blog name. So here, here's what I like to tell folks to do when they're creating their blog name is okay. write down everything that you want to blog about. Um, 90% of the blogs out there are lifestyle blogs, 90% of them. Um, and it's, when you call it a lifestyle blog, that's kind of this overarching category, so to speak. And you're just talking about stuff that comes along in your life. And, uh, and so you can blog, even a travel blog is considered a lifestyle blog. That's the, okay. that's the realization of what it is. And there are some technical blogs out there, but most of us, um, have a lifestyle blog of some sort. Uh, we're either going to talk about cooking or we're going to talk about traveling or we're going to talk about kids or we're going to talk about, uh, you know, maybe uh, breeding dogs. I mean, there's all kinds of things that we do in our everyday lives and we, you know, folks like to blog about it and that becomes a lifestyle blog. So to create the name of your blog, I recommend that, that you make a list of everything that you're interested in that you think you might want to write about and then see if you can find a common thread through all of those things. And um, Sylvia just tapped in. Sylvia, I'm going to ask if you'd like to come up so that we can see you. Um, and if you decline that, we can at least let you uh, chat with us so that you don't have to <laughs> you don't have to type everything out in the chat. Um, and that's what Carolyn and Michelle are doing, by the way, uh, Linda, is that um, they just added themselves over to talk with us, uh, but not to have their videos on. And so uh, now we have somebody here that's just a phone number. We're not sure who that is. Uh, we're going to let them chat as well and uh, see who that is. And then Sylvia should be coming pretty soon here. I don't see Sylvia yet. Okay. All right. 
Okay. So what I did for myself is that I created uh, this big long list and I saw all the things that I was interested in, but then I had to decide, uh, you know, what is the common thread through all those things, but what is the common feeling that I wanted folks to have? What was it anytime I was writing? Because when you write, you can go back and you can uh, investigate all these different tones, if you will, in your writing. Are you inspirational writer? Are you an educational writer? Are, you know, so you can decide what tone you have, you know, are, are you a humor writer? Do you like, you know, to, to have humor in your writing? And so what kind of a feeling do you want to leave with your listeners? And so I determined that when I looked at everything I was doing, that I was um, an inspirational writer. And so being an inspirational writer, I wanted my folks to be inspired to feel something when they read my post. And what I wanted them to feel was that they could have this freestyle life. And so I ended up calling my blog Freestyle Living. So um, let's just check. Um, now, Carolyn, did you say you, you have launched your blog or not yet? I don't, I don't have one and I haven't, I don't have any immediate plans for that. Okay. Uh, have you thought about, cause you're here, have you thought about what you would name a blog if you, if you launched one? Um, no, not <laughs> for sure. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, um, I, I think that I have just, I'm 74. I'm an artist. Okay. Um, I have this year kind of struggled with where am I going in life? You know, what this next phase is. And so I've wondered if I can tap into other women around my age who might feel similarly. Okay. Uh, so well, that's definitely a lifestyle blog. Okay. Okay, that's about as far as I've gotten. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, Sylvia, I see that you have declined to come up. So I am going to just click you, allow you to talk so that that way you don't have to type everything in the chat. So Sylvia is also joining by microphone only and not the camera. Um, so Michelle, you said you just launched yesterday. What did you name your blog? Well, my blog is called Poetry and Ponderings. Okay. And so I, I write poetry. Um, I am, uh, I guess, considered a senior citizen. <laughs> so I write about, you know, just things I've learned. I, that's what I intend to write about, things I've learned over the past, how, you know, in different seasons of your life, you know, you're called to do different things. And so um, I wanted to be, I determined it was going to be inspirational too. I'd like to okay. leave the reader with a feeling of positivity and encouragement. Okay. So I so again, you have a, a certain feeling that you want your audience to leave with. So you're definitely going to be a, a lifestyle blog and you'll have a particular tone on on what you want to write. So think, um, yeah, think about all the things that you want to write about because your title is broad enough that you can talk about a lot of different topics there. Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I, I like I, that. Jotting down. So I haven't written my first blog post just a welcome you know and I don't, I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to write I've had some notes on things I've jotted down in the past but haven't put together yet <laughs> okay okay well you're you know what you started good for you good for you thank you um yeah let me jump over to Sylvia Sylvia if you'd like to unmike do you already have a blog and if so do you uh have what is the name of your blog or are you just now thinking about starting one and we'll see if Sylvia is at a place where she can unmic. I'm not sure. And then we have a phone number and we don't have a name. Uh, do you want to unmic and tell us a little bit about who you are and do you have a blog? Uh, the phone number is a 9410 number. Maybe not. I know it's a Friday morning at 10. And if you're maybe at work or doing something else, you're multitasking. I get that. So not to worry. So anyway, once you decide all the things that you want to write about and you've come up with a common thread as to, uh, you know, what that feeling is going to be, that 
what tone you're going to use, whether you want to inspire or, or whatever it is that you want to instill in your readers, then you have to decide, okay, now I've, I've got this idea, I've got this name, now I'm ready to do something with it. What platform are you going to put it on? And all and and I don't want to I don't want to make it. We've got newbies and beginners in this room. I don't want to make it complicated. I'm going to really make it simple. A blog platform is just a little website. That's all it is. Don't overthink it. It's just a little website. And there are hundreds and hundreds of plug and play websites out there. You've got Wix. You've got Weebly. You can Google what are the top blogging platforms. They're all just a little website. So if you don't want to spend a lot of money, you don't have to. You can just click through on one of those and get started. And oftentimes on the little drag and drop or plug and play, it's where you just, you know, you write something over here in a document and now you can just copy and paste it and boom, you're ready to hit the publish button. And so don't get carried away. Don't make it harder than it is. Um, if you say, oh, even that is a little over my head. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to pick that or whatever. You can actually, if you have an email list, you can actually type your blog right out in the body of the email and send it out to your email list. That's still blogging, but keep, Keep your article, whatever it is that you're writing, keep a copy, keep that document. Um, I save all of mine in Google Docs these days, but if, you, if, if you're if you into Word, that's fine. But save a copy. Now, if you're really, really old school, um, like my Mark, you know, he wants to print it out, put it in a folder. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I get that. If that's if that works for you, you at least did not lose what you wrote, because here's the problem is uh, you don't want to lose what you wrote. So uh, you're only as good as your hard drive. If something crashes, you could lose everything that you have stored in there. So, again, I recommend that once you type something, if you're doing it in the computer, that you save it into a cloud storage somewhere. Google Docs are already in the Google Cloud. Um, you know, if you email it to yourself, it'll all, it, you know, let's say you're on Verizon, it'll be in the Verizon cloud, all your emails will be saved. So there's some ways that you can save those, um, those documents, the writing so that you don't lose them. So that's the first thing. And again, if Sylvia or whoever it is behind the phone number, uh, if you're real techie, and this is like, you know, you're way ahead of us, I get that too. <laughs> because we're all on that spectrum. But yeah. for those that are beginners that have never done this before, um, blogging is is simply you're going to type an article and you're going to put it out there for your readers. And so where you put it is is really kind of immaterial. It's it's all about where are your readers. So what we recommend or what I recommend is that you just have a little three page website of some sort where you can post your blog, your article that you're writing, you can have an about me page and a contact page. And that's the whole thing. And I'm going to, I'll show you mine before we go. So you see it, but that's the whole thing. So you've come up with the list of what you want to write about. You've come up with your blog name. You now go in to the computer and you've chosen one of those um, little websites that doesn't cost hardly anything. And, um, and, and you put in your name to see if it's available. And if it is, a lot of times they will host the domain and give you the platform all for one little tiny monthly price. And I'm on HostGator and my HostGator was like $3.46 a month for the first year. And that was to host and to have the platform. Um, now, Linda, she's on a bigger platform because she has um, some courses and she's got some uh uh, where she's she's doing uh, master classes and she's doing a lot of other things. And so her platform allowed her to just add her blog to an existing platform. So I'm on one end of the spectrum where my entire blog is on one little website. And Linda is at the other end of the spectrum where she has all of her products and services on one website, including her blog. And there's a million and one hybrids in the middle between what I'm doing and what she's doing. So for any of you, and I'm going to put this in the uh, down in the chat. I'm going to put my, uh, the way to contact me, it's just under kathybinner.com. Mm -hmm. And you will see my website there. And uh, and there's a place where you can connect and get a strategy call with me. And if you have any questions, contact me outside of this. Because, again, um, it's hard for me to, to explain where every individual person is. But from what I hear from Carolyn and Michelle, you're both new. I haven't heard from Sylvia um, or the, the 9410. Nine, I haven't heard from them as to where they are. 
uh, in their blogging process. But um, again, um, if if you're way ahead, I get that. If you're way behind, I get that too. I, I was there way behind for a lot of years. So I get that. <laughs> um, so anyhow, after you then decide on your platform, now you need to customize it. So you need to start with the end in mind. So you start thinking about how might I like to actually monetize this at the other end? You know, when I'm all done with this list of things to do, you know, what's my go-to? Well, I don't know if any of you gals, and again, I, I get it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm also a, a senior citizen, so I get it. Um, sometimes when you're scrolling around on social media, you're like, what in the heck are they even talking about? You know, <laughs> um, because all of this technology has has come to the forefront. And, uh, and, it, and again, we can figure it out. But it takes a little bit more effort <laughs> when I get stuck on my remote to my TV. I have to call my 11 year old grandson to figure it out for me. So you get it. So what happens now is, is when you're, you're looking at how to monetize, they say, oh, you could have an Amazon store or you could do this or you could do that or you just go here and they print the T-shirt and over here they order the T-shirt and then the place that prints it mails it out to who ordered it and you get paid for it and you're thinking, what? How, how do I make all of that happen? So you have to kind of decide what are you comfortable with? on how you're going to monetize this blog. Are you going to do affiliate links, for example, with Amazon? Um, are you going to sell candles out of your garage? You know, is that your thing? And and so now as you're blogging, you want to offer these candles for sale. So again, it's, it's however you think you might want to monetize your blog. Um, maybe you're talking about a topic. I had a gal who wanted to start uh, a dog grooming type blog. And all of a sudden, some of these companies that supply dog groomers, once her readership got to be a certain number, they wanted to advertise on her blog. And so she's monetizing by allowing advertisers to come on her blog. And so there's all kinds of ways to monetize. So you have to kind of think about that a little bit, because now when you back up to step three, which is customizing it, what do you want it to look like? You know, if you're going if, if to position yourself for advertisers, then you're going to want to have a, a tighter niche, if you will, because that's the advertisers that you want to be interested. In, and they are only going to be interested if your entire audience is in their lane. And so, uh, but if you want to talk about more broad things, and, uh, and you're thinking, okay, the advertising thing's not for me, um, but I love Amazon. I order from Amazon all the time. Maybe I just want to have an Amazon affiliate link. And anytime I buy something that's useful in, in my life, I can just weave that story in my lifestyle blog and have a link where anybody that clicks on the link, I get paid if they if they buy that product. So maybe that's how you're going to monetize. And so now you're you, when you customize, it can be a little more broad. It can be a little more colorful. It can have a little more topics. It can do all those things because you might be all over your list of things you want to talk about uh, to monetize. Like one day I might be talking about my favorite author and have a link to the book. And another day I might be talking about uh, you know running my bed and breakfast and I got this great sweeper from Amazon and I might put a link to that, you know, so see, I could talk about all kinds of things. So you, are you following what I'm saying here? You kind of have to, to yes. kind of reverse engineer that yeah. a little bit so that you can decide how am I going to monetize that at the other end? And then once you decide that and, and how you're going to customize it, for example, like the lady that's going to talk about dogs, she might have dogs on her, you know, on her borders of everything. Uh, you know, that might be, you know, how she customizes her platform. I chose to just go with a plain color because I talk about stuff all over the map. <laughs> and so I didn't customize mine in a particular thing. I have a, a Sally, who is my normal co-host, co-mod on this call. She is a travel agent. So she customized hers with a beach scene in the background. And so everything she blogs about, this beach scene is kind of, you know, like a screen print in the background of all of her blogs uh, because she's a travel agent. And that just fits what she's talking about. So you see where I'm going with customizing. And then after that, you're ready to start writing. And again, make sure you save a copy. You know, you're either going to write it, uh, you know, even if you write it out in, a, in, a, in an email, save the email, open a file and save all of those so that you have an actual copy of what you wrote. So you don't lose that. And 
if you're going to put it over on a blog, I like to write it first over in a Word document, whether it be Google Docs or Word or wherever it's comfortable for you. And, uh, and then I just copy and paste mine over into my blog post and then hit publish and boom, it goes out on my post. So now you've, you've come up with a name. You've decided where you're going to park everything. You've decided what platform, where you're going to home everything. You've decided how you're going to customize it with the end in mind, with where you're headed. Now you've written some posts and you've published them. Now, how do you get people to find you? How do you get people to read those? Well, the fastest and easiest way is to simply uh, take the first sentence of your blog and with a link back to your blog, back to whatever platform you just, you chose, and just sprinkle that across social media. And you can put it on Facebook, you can put it on Instagram, you can put it on Pinterest, you can put it on LinkedIn, uh, you can send it out to your email list. I mean, there's all kinds of ways to do that. But if you don't do any of that, if you don't do any of that and you just publish, how many of you, and this is a this is going to be a, a question, I'll see what kind of answers I get. How many of you have I'll, I'll use the term, Googled something, searched for something on the internet. And, and the, the example I use all the time is like, how do I type in, how do I can tomatoes? And you hit enter. And all of a sudden, uh, you see all of these links on, on your computer screen on five ways to can tomatoes, uh, you know, 10, 10 tricks on, on having that perfect canned tomato. You've got all these links that you can click on. 90% of those links are a blog post. Okay. Yeah. So if you didn't sprinkle your information across any social media and you just wrote the blog and published it, you are out there in internet land. And so now the question is, how do I get mine to come up on that first page? Because I don't know about you, but if you've ever searched for something uh, and you look at the bottom, there might be 50 pages of stuff that came up on your search. And you scroll like down through the first page and then you go, ah, not what I'm looking for. And then you type in a different way to search for because it wasn't what you were looking for. You, very few people click through 10 pages of whatever to find something. So now the question is, how do you get your article to come up? on the first page when somebody searches for that topic. And that is where you use particular words uh, on what people are looking for. And there's some ways to find out um, what the most common thing is. And I'll give you a perfect example. Um, I was talking all about passive income. And so finally, I went over to Google Trends, which is just a free website. And, I, and it gives you, I don't know, maybe four blocks and I typed in four different ways that people might search for passive income. So I put passive income in one block. I put work from home in a block. Uh, I put um, help, I need a job in a block. <laughs> you know, so I, I, did, I did four different variations and then I entered and it came up that work from home was head and shoulders above all the other phrases or words that I was using. So what that told me was anytime I write an article about passive income, I need to have the phrase work from home somewhere in either the title or in that first paragraph mm -hmm. so that the search engine can pick that up and move me to the top of that list. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So Google Trends, so make a note, Google Trends, you can go over and see what's trending. You can see how people are searching for the topic that you're getting ready to write about. And then make sure that whatever is trending, weave some of that into your article. Now, another way is take whatever topic or subject that, that you're writing about and just go search for that and see what sentences come up first on the first page because again the algorithms will put the articles to the top that people are actually searching for so um, again if you say how to can tomatoes and the first five articles are tips and tricks on canning tomatoes well then i need to have the phrase tips and tricks in my title somewhere so that i get on the first page as well does that make sense yes yes Okay, so that's how you can promote. So again, 
even if you don't sprinkle it out across all of your social media, if you go, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have all these social media accounts. I don't want to have to monitor all of those social media accounts. I just want to blog. You know, I just want to, you know, share and write and, and see who I attract. You will still attract folks if you just put it out there on the Internet because you're out in Internet land at that point. And then once you start to build an audience, because people will start to get to know, like and trust you. And once you start to build an audience where, you know, on your blog, you have a place where they can sign up to, to be on your mailing list. And then every time you post something, you're going to also email it to, to your mailing list, your email list. And once you have a certain number of folks that are just there following you all the time, you will start attracting some advertisers. Some folks will start contacting you saying, can we advertise on your blog? Um, there's a gal right now, and and um, I'm not going to say her name, but she does murder and makeup. Has anybody seen her? It's a it's a mm -hmm. vlog. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you: a vlog, v l o g, is simply a video blog. It's where you do a videotape instead of a written blog. You just talk like I could be doing a vlog right now. Uh, you know, it's just a recording of yourself telling the story instead of writing it out on a blog post. And that's called a vlog instead of a blog, a V instead of a B. And she vlogs. And what she does is she puts her makeup on. And while she's putting her makeup on, she's telling a true murder story. She was like, did you hear about Alice back in 1895? And she came, you know, and she got this job and then she disappeared. And, you know, and she's and it sucks you in because she's got a little, you know, drama to her storytelling. And, you know, you're listening to her and she's just putting on her. And by the time her makeup is totally done, she's at the end of her story. And you're thinking, who would who would watch that? She has such a following that makeup companies are in line to advertise on her vlog. Wow. Because what, what she does is as is in in the middle of her storytelling, she'll she'll say, now this mascara is from XYZ company. And then she'll put it on and then she goes, but then Alice met this guy and she went, then they went out one night and then her friends didn't find her. And oh, now this lipstick is from XYZ. And then she's putting her lipstick. Anyhow, so she's kind of advertising as she's telling her murder story. And now these advertisers are lined up. And and so she actually, somebody interviewed her not too long ago. And she actually quit her day job because she was making so much money off of these advertisers that she just does a makeup and murder once a morning. I think she said now she's down to just three mornings a week. And that's her income. That's how she's monetized her vlog. So what happens, and her, her listenership is huge. So what happens is once you start to attract an audience, advertisers will search you out. Um, then you'll know, you'll know when it's time, if you want to even go that far. And it could be that that's not your intent at all, but it could be that you do want to monetize. But the fastest way to monetize is to have an affiliate link or more than you can have as many as you want. Um, so any single company that you like, see if they have an affiliate link, you would be surprised at companies that have an affiliate link that you didn't know have an affiliate link. For example, um, I have a condo in Florida and I'm with a con company down there called breeze line is who my Wi-Fi is through. I just got an email that breeze line, um, actually, um, pays a $50, um, I don't know what to call it, um, if if I refer somebody to them. Every time I refer somebody to them, I get a $50 credit on my bill. Well, that's money. And I didn't know that. I'm thinking, okay, so now when I'm blogging, I can say I've got this great condo and it's got high-speed Wi-Fi through Breeze Line. And I can simply hyperlink that sentence and anybody that clicks on it and says, oh yeah, I think I'll try Breeze Line. I get 50 bucks for just writing about them. So you see how, have as many affiliate links as, as you want and companies that you don't even think about having an affiliate link. That's all that is, is Breeze Line has an affiliate link for all their members. And you see where it's a win-win. Actually, it's a win-win-win. They get more customers. I get paid for sending folks over to them. And a new customer gets a great a great plan that that works really well. See, so it's a win win win. So everybody wins in a situation like that. So, so how would you, 
Go ahead. How would you go about uh, setting up that affiliate link? On your you have, well, you have to, like with the breeze line, I, it's because I got this email and it said, you know, don't leave $50 on the table. That was their title. Okay. And I was like, what? And so I read through the email and it said, I bet you didn't know that if you send us somebody, you get 50 bucks. And here is the link that you can basically okay. hand out. So okay. all I do is copy and paste that link over into my blog. Okay. I see. Thank you. Yes. Linda. And you're on mute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I uh, had some background noise. I did not want to transfer through. Um, another uh, cool thing, Michelle, is if there's a product that you love or uh, want to explore, if there's a program, you can go to the website of that company, scroll all the way down to the footer on their main homepage. And often there's a little line there at the bottom that says affiliate program. And you oh. click on that and you can find out what's involved. And some, okay. most companies are pretty simple. Um, you just say who you are and they say, here's your link. Uh, some of them want to know what you're going to do for them and how you're going to market. Uh, and so then you you tell them what you have going on and how you might be able to benefit them. And maybe you get the link, maybe you don't. But I mean, just keep reaching out for all the things that you'd like to represent. And as you write your articles, as Kathy said, these are just wonderful opportunities to just organically drop that information right into your article. Okay, thank you. Nope. And, and Amazon is Amazon is probably one of my favorite ones. And uh, and and this is this is going to be uh, this is this is going to be worth the call today. What I'm about to tell you, if you like Linda said, if you scroll to the bottom of your Amazon account down to the footer, there's a thing there called uh, the affiliate program and you can click okay. through and sign up. And here's the joy of Amazon. I don't know about you guys, but I started ordering more and more. I, I told myself I wasn't going to, but it's so darn easy and it gets delivered right to my door <laughs> and life gets busy. And next thing you know, I've got Amazon coming a couple of times a week and some people even more than that. But so anyhow, so now you have your Amazon link and you, you blog about something like, you know, I got the new sweeper and I've got a whole listener uh, of, of all of these bed and breakfast. Cause I also teach a bed and breakfast course. So I've got a ton of bed and breakfast people that follow me and I go, Hey, I got this great sweeper. I love it. Wish I had it earlier. It does a great job on the B and B and um, it's lightweight. I can carry it upstairs, you know? And so now I hyperlinked that sentence with the link over to Amazon where I bought it. Okay. And so now when these folks read my blog and they go, you know, I do need a new sweeper. Let me click on this and see Kathy likes it so well. So they click on it. It takes them to Amazon. And for those of you that are Amazon shoppers, once you pick out your two or three things, you know, that you're going to buy it, come, they're a great marketing platform so it comes up across the bottom of their screen oh people that bought this sweeper also bought this and this and that and there's like 10 more things and so okay. while your person is there they're like yeah i think i will get this and this and oh why I, I i do need paper towels and toilet paper i'll jump over and get that while i'm there amazon pays you commission on the entire order that they did when they clicked on your link okay great wow that sounds that's, good <laughs> that's that's that. worth the call today right there Right. Once somebody clicks on your link, you get paid commission on that entire order that they click through on, not just the sweeper. Okay. I'm just wondering how I could weave that into poetry and ponderings. <laughs> no, no products. Yes. Linda. There we go. Okay. A couple things. Um, unless this has just recently changed. Michelle, when you go looking, it's probably not going to say Amazon Affiliates. It's probably going to say Amazon Associates. Oh, okay. Because so, I don't think they use the word affiliate at all, really. But it, that's what we're talking about. So that's that's what you're going to look for. But um, for you, they have lovely journals of every kind. I mean, there are things you could recommend. If you have okay. a pen that you love, I mean, oh, that's and a good idea. honestly... This isn't poetry, but it just because you, it might be up the alley of the people that you talk to. Mm -hmm. Like I have these beautiful styluses that I get from Amazon. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you can recommend really cool stuff. A lovely mug. I mean, 
You've got okay. all kinds of options. That's true. And <laughs> now that you think, I, now you, you open up my mind to seeing <laughs> a little differently. I wasn't thinking like that. Okay. Yeah, you have to you. kind of see some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, Linda, tell the group a little bit about what you do and how you're monetizing yours. Ah, uh, well, I'm I'm getting several things off the ground at the same time. However, I I will say, I am getting my toes into the water of print on demand. So this is one of my first samples that has come mm -hmm. back. <laughs> So this is my one of my logos for my Legacy of Love project. And I just picked a, a little a Bible verse, just a little slogan that was short that I could fit on there. I have my domain name at the bottom and it's on both sides. So if you're right or left handed wow. and it's red on the inside and I have multiple colors, you know, so all that. And then I found this um, tumbler that has my heart shape scene which is another part of my marketing mm -hmm. and part of her branding um, yeah yeah and um it has the sliding thing so that you can't spill your drink when you're carrying it or you're in the car and um i have other things that i've designed and uh, these are the first two samples that have rolled in oh, oh and uh, if if i put my thing on stop video for one second Linda, you can um, you can share your screen. I've made you a co-host if you wanted to share your screen. She may have jumped over to, to pick up something to show us. Um, so she may have left her station for a minute to uh, her computer. I there am she is. nearby. So I went to get some other print-on-demand items. Um, this one's in a plastic wrapper. I hope this does Oh, let me kill my mic for a second. She's opening that up so she can show it to us. So are you getting the idea? Now, all she's doing with yes. print on demand is that she's found a place that will print this for her. Then she's found a place that when an order comes in, it automatically goes over and it literally is print on demand. They print it as it's ordered. She does not have to have a garage full of coffee mugs. Okay. Amen. <laughs> wow. So this, and if you end up with a logo, uh, any of you uh, ladies who are attending, you can you can have it put on your things. Um, this is a, this is bigger than the space. Um, this is a thermos that I was able to get a really, this is a wonderful, like almost enamel like uh, logo that was put on. So I'm real happy with the way this came out, but up, uh, up your line, I have a spiral bound notebook that I put the logo on mm -hmm. and I and I designed this cover on um, Canva. So I, it's kind of a gradient. And so I'm calling this color platinum because it goes from mm -hmm. slightly lighter to slightly darker. And it just looks to me, it looks kind of rich. So yes. and uh, this happens to be a a, a lined page. I don't know if you can okay. see that. So just a journal. But, so it's a journal book. Okay. Right. So, but this one you, you might groove on as well. This is a hardback journal mm. and mm. it has the stretchy thing to keep it closed. The pages are color coordinated. They had four colors for the pages and the inside is the same color. And then it is aligned on the inside. So there's there's so many things. And I actually designed two versions of my um, heart-shaped scene. I have two versions of this on journals that mm -hmm. I'm uh, ordering samples for right now as well. So um, yeah, I mean, the sky's the limit for pre-made products or, or customized. Okay. Now, Thank ladies, you. just so you know, Again, Linda has this all-inclusive website and my guess or platform. And my guess is, Linda, is that you can add your store right there in your website or in your platform. Am I correct? Yeah, there's or a couple. Do you have to go couple... outside of your platform or can you do it inside your own platform? I can I can do it either way, depending on what I want to do. If I just want to feature like a couple of pieces, I can have it on a basic web page with an image and a button and the button goes elsewhere to get it. Or I also created a, a little baby Shopify um, account. And um, 
So that way, everything that I publish is just there and I can publish the link to my Shopify page. And um, just for all of us who are dabbling in this idea of monetization, um, in my travels, I discovered that Shopify has their own page that's a lot like a link tree. They call it Link Pop. And you can actually sell your items on that page. And it's like, they're on your page, they're looking, there's the picture of the mug, they tap it, they, they can buy it right there. And it and that is that can be your um, your link in bio if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. all kinds of now, options. Linda, let me ask you this. Are you doing all of your products from the same print on demand or are you getting them from different places? Because you have journals and you have the mugs and you've got the thermos. Are they from different print on demand or from the same company? Yeah. So at this point, I just started with Printify. Uh, a friend of mine was using them and she was showing me her cute things. And I was like, I got to do this. So Printify is buying from or working with all kinds of different places. Like one place might print t-shirts, another place might print mugs and keychains, you know, another might print okay. coat bags. So it's kind but, of a mm -hmm. consortium in a way. But mm -hmm. you're just using Printify and they're the ones that reach out to all those different variations. At this point, now I've okay. heard people say, oh, well, have you thought about X or Y? So in my spare time, air quotes, <laughs> mm -hmm. I will probably explore the other, some other ones and they might have a different style of a t-shirt or a, a different kind of a mug that I really like. And then I can upload any of those to, to Shopify if they if their software um, integrates with Shopify and like who isn't going to integrate with Shopify right so right I, right, I, right I feel like I can open all kinds of options and add other things to my store. Now, okay. did you did you ladies really get the the simplicity in this? Um, she basically went out to the the Printify website and open an account. I don't know, does it cost to open an account or is it a free account? Free. It's a free account, okay. okay. Then she went over to Shopify and opened an account. And then I don't know if you connect on which end. My guess is, is that you go to Shopify to connect back to your Printify. And there's I, probably an easy I, way to do that. Yeah, I, 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 you could probably go either way, but I think I started at Printify because they emphasize okay. that that you can go the Shopify route and expand okay. your reach. So um, they, these, these companies are trying to make it as easy as possible to get your business. So oftentimes it's just a matter of clicking a button and putting in the URL of the other site and you're connected. And so um, they make it super simple. So don't, don't think, Oh, that's way too complicated. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. And then when you have your, you decide where you want, what platform you want to put your blog on, whether it's inside your regular website or whether you're going to open up a website just for your blog, whatever. Now, all you're doing is, is you're just, whenever you highlight a sentence where you're talking about one of these products, you're just linking it over to your Shopify account. And folks, just like you would link it over to your Amazon, you're going to link it over to your own Shopify. And when folks click on it, they automatically go there. Yes, right. Linda. So a uh, quick comment on what you just said, Kathy. Um, you could send people in the hyperlink in your blog post to your Shopify or whatever page. Or if you were talking about the mug, you could specifically put the link to this item. Right to so the mug. Don't get sidetracked. Yeah. So is that like using a third party with the ship? Would you pay for that? Anything that they shipped out or print it for you? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, like Printify adds the shipping to each item. And so and right now I'm trying to navigate. I, I tried to build my my shipping into my cost and into the the listed price of the mug, for example, so mm -hmm. that I can say free shipping in the United States. But right now I'm learning by doing. Um Shopify is adding freight and I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want you to do that. So I haven't figured out like which setting to play with so mm -hmm. that Shopify doesn't do that. And Printify bills the sales tax. So I love that. And I did want to emphasize once again, this is just me trying to scratch my own itch. I didn't want 
like Shopify can serve people with gigantic businesses and inventories and stuff. And I'm just like this little tiny tadpole here. And um, so I picked their, their simplest entry level program. It's a dollar a month for the first three months and then $5 a month thereafter. And basically if you sell like one or two items in a month, you've more than covered your cost to be on the platform. So these are just the things I'm finding out. I wanted to have a little bit of merch, um, mm -hmm. you know, if I wanted to offer it as like incentives in a workshop or a course or whatever, uh, just for me to, to be using my own branded stuff on when I'm online in a meeting or, or if I go to a live meeting, if I have my lovely legacy of love tote bag, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yes. So it, I, it started with me wanting some some more proof that I'm a thing, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> but also some incentives. But um, some of my friends that I've shown it to are like, you've got to give us the link to your store because I want yes. one of them. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, because I, I just now I just now opened up and I said, here's my mug. It came from, you know, wouldn't it be great if I said, and here's one of Linda's mugs. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's okay. what it's happens is that folks will advertise for you um, once they have your merchandise. And, and again, um, I one of my lanes is real estate. And uh, I had a big real estate meetup last night. And this couple came and they had their their uh, property company name on shirts. And I was like, what? I'm like, I don't need to do that. <laughs> and it's so simple. You just go over to Printify and pick a shirt and and put what you want, logo what you want on it, and they'll do it for you. And okay, so I, be, I know yeah. I have a I do have a site where I do have my own store and I'm I'm selling one product, which is the book that I've written. So so it does link to the, you know, links to the book, and then you can purchase it right online. But I didn't involve a third party. So I'm the one, you know, I'm, I have you not know, set it up for taxes and everything, but uh -huh. I ship out the product since it's a, a, it's not a large book. It's a book. Um, and I have a flat rate and then for United States and then a different price for this out of the country. But I, I didn't think about, you know, putting my, you know, my logo or that particular book cover on any merchandise. So that's something. Oh, new. wow. Yeah. There's an idea. So, I thought of another product, bookmarks. Bookmarks, yes. All kinds of pretty bookmarks. <laughs> That's true. And I should have thought about that. I'm a, a retired teacher. I just retired. So bookmarks <laughs> okay. should have been the first thing I came up with. <laughs> okay. I I love this. Michelle, what is your book about? Well, it's called, um, it's a poetry memoir. So it okay. touches on different topics um, related to, you know, my life. It talks about uh, family, love, uh, grief, religion, okay, um, you know, just the various themes, and so um, a lot of on the memories of my ch my childhood and growing up and things that I've overcome. It also talks about you know becoming because a lot of times we don't know who we are when we're younger, so you know it has a, a little flow to it. <laughs> I I love that. I love that, and oh my goodness, you can blog about so many things, and just at the bottom you can mention your book every single blog. Oh, okay. And, yeah, I did mention yeah, that on so my I'm, first welcome blog, <laughs> my welcome uh, post, but I will yeah, get on I'm gonna I'm going to show you here. Okay. Um, this this is mine. It's just a little three-page, and I, I promised that I would show you this before we go. This is just a little three-page website is okay. all it is. Uh, and mine is through HostGator. Um, and again, like I said, it was $3 and something a, a month. Uh, to get started. And it just has the homepage, which is where mm -hmm. my blogs are. And as you can see, I even named it Freestyle Living Blog. So when people mm -hmm. land here, they know that they're on a blog. They're not on a business web page. But then mm -hmm. it just has my work with me and my connect. That's the whole thing, three pages. Mm -hmm. And then when you yeah. scroll down, here's where all my blogs are. And so now I'm going to just click on the last one. And uh, the last blog that I wrote, um, was just a week or so ago. And it was talking about mastering the art of creating margins in your time. And mm -hmm. that that was, you know, by Kathy Benner, there's the date. And then here's the blog post. And when you get to the bottom, all I did is I hyperlinked to connect with Kathy, go, go to this link. 
Okay, that's a good and idea. And you could say, you know, you could talk about your book and you could say to purchase the book, you know, click here. Okay. So you can start monetizing your writing right away. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, I it does. I, I put it in my, my welcome, the first welcome post, but I I will do it for everyone. I got put it on post. every single post. Yes. Okay. Put or put some way. Now I'm using Linktree as an electronic mm -hmm. business card. And Linda talked mm -hmm. about where uh, even on Shopify, they have their own little version there that you could just send them straight over if that's how you're monetizing right, right. over to your Shopify account. But I am monetizing some courses and calls like this and masterminds. And so I have everything on Linktree, which is okay. free. I and have uh, you have Linktree. OK. Yeah. And so when you go to my Linktree, then here is, uh, you know, all of my links automatically mm -hmm. on the link tree. And so mm -hmm. they can come over here to connect with me. So it's just a way uh, to get your readers to connect more with you. So folks that follow me for a while and say, oh, yes, I, I love everything Kathy's talking about. And I think I want to, you know, work with her or I want to know more about her. They're going to click on that link tree. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Okay, so, so that's the, those are the ways you can monetize. Okay, okay, thank you. That makes sense. I just, you know, I guess I'm worried, not worried, but I'm just starting, and so I'm worried about building up a following. So I guess it takes time. Oh yes, I know it takes time, so I shouldn't be be too concerned about that right away, should I? <laughs> No, no, yes, no. Don't worry. Know. Don't worry about your following. Let me okay. let me just give you let me just give you some real numbers here. If you if you opened a brick and mortar business, it takes three to five years for you to make a profit. Now, mm -hmm. they may look busy. A pizza shop may open and you might go, oh, my goodness, look how busy they are. But they spent so much money to open that brick and mortar right. store that it's usually three to five years before they're actually turning a profit because yeah. they're still paying because they had to build the building and right. you know, anyway. So um, it, three to five years is the norm. It's the same when you're building an online business. It's three to five years before it really starts to resonate with folks. And, mm -hmm. uh, and think about yourself. How many times have you seen something online and you're kind of interested, but yet you didn't click? And then maybe six months goes by and you see it again and you're thinking, yeah, I've been meaning to check that out. And uh, and maybe, uh, you know, uh, 18 months down the road, you finally click on it because you've got some free time. It just, you know, all the stars align that particular day and you've got time and it, there, mm -hmm. there's the link again and you go, I'm going to check this out. Well, a lot of businesses, they don't stick around long enough for people to finally discover them. Right. They, they expect their business to be in full bloom in eight weeks, you know, a couple of months. And then they go, well, that didn't work. And then they just quit. And they didn't give it time to, to take root and actually grow into a business. So I'm, I'm here to tell you consistency is the key and give it three to five years to really start monetizing. Okay. Um, and again, if somebody clicks over and you've got two posts, two blog posts, they're not going to get a real feel for for how you think and who you are in just a couple of blog posts. Um, it's when it's when you have, you know, a couple of years worth of blog post and then somebody clicks over and they're like, oh, my gosh, look at all this great information from Michelle. And they love your tone. They love uh, the inspiration you're giving them. They They love the things you're talking about. They love the products that you're referring them to. And next thing you know, they're like, I, I, I'm on her mailing list. I, I, I love following her. It's okay. like my makeup and murder gal. I'm not interested in, I hardly wear any makeup and I'm certainly not really into murder. Now I, I do want to write mystery novels. And so every time I see her, I get sucked in. And I, and, and, you know, and, and YouTube knows how many minutes I've spent there <laughs> watching her, you know? And so every time I go over to YouTube, it throws her up in, in, in the advertisement along the side, there's two or three of her videos because YouTube goes, ah, here's Kathy. She likes this murder makeup girl. Let me, let's, let's just throw her up there every time. And that's what will start to happen in your blog post okay. every time. It's like Facebook. Have you ever have you ever searched for something? And then when you go back to Facebook, there's ads for the very thing you were searching yes. for. <laughs> okay. When people start clicking on you, then every time they sign in, your stuff's going to come up in front of them. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. 
All right, Carolyn, any, did we did we totally overwhelm you, Carolyn? <laughs> not at all, not at all. It's been all helpful information. Um, it kind of gets me excited to think I might actually do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is great. I love it. I just, um, I found these sessions to be so practical and so helpful. Good, um, good, good, good. And I've told my friends who I think should have blogs, hey, you know, you need yes. to look at this. So anyway, yes, thank you very much. Carolyn, we're glad that you're here. I, I can't wait to see what you gals are going to do. Um, Sylvia, you've been very quietly, patiently waiting in the background. I'll just invite you uh, to chat if you want to. I don't know if you might be, you know, doing double duty at work or something and <laughs> not able to take your microphone off. So I get it if you can't. But yes, there's Sylvia. Hi, how are you? Uh, pretty good. So uh, I've been sitting here thinking about what I could say about all this. Okay. Uh, well, what are your thoughts so far? Have, have you been inspired and, and are you blogging already or are you brand new? Um, somewhere in between. I have, okay. not, I have not launched my blog yet. Um, I have, I guess I'm a slow starter. <laughs> I, I have had uh, the first uh, post ready for <laughs> quite a long time. And I think I was going to launch it that way, and then I went a couple of months ago to your uh, your whatever you call it, uh -huh, <laughs> and, uh -huh, our free uh, meetup, uh huh. And you, and you said something about you should have at least ten posts written, and so you know, I, I wrote the second one last week, but somehow I hit didn't hit the right button and I, I went through the whole thing it took me maybe an hour and I didn't save it but I feel like I accomplished something because it's a story that's been in my head forever and uh, I got it down and I feel like I could pretty easily recreate it so I'm going to do that but um, I, I realized what I've been doing for the last several years is uh, building an uh, building a following, building an audience. Um, my blog uh, is going to be entitled "My Life and Dogs." Okay. Um, I I've been involved on and off in the dog fancy. With I was a breeder of. English Cocker Spaniels. Oh, well, then my uh, example about dogs is right up your alley. <laughs> right. And uh, this was uh, like way back in the 70s and 80s. So for the for the lady who said she was 74, was thinking about the next thing she was going to do in life. Uh, I'm 77. So <laughs> this is where I am. But uh, I, um, I was inspired by a person who had a column in the uh, little magazine put out by the English Cocker Spaniel Club of America. And she wrote this column that was uh, mostly very humorous. And she also made cartoons and did photographs. And eventually the columns were uh, published, uh, picked up by Howell, Howell Bookhouse and publish in two different books. And uh, now there be those books are being published on some of the English Cocker um, groups on Facebook. And I mean, a few pages at a time. And uh, I mean, that's considered a classic now, but I remember when she started writing that, I was thinking, I could do that, you know. Uh -huh. I have a lot of stories about. Now, mine won't be primarily humor. It will be about different little in little fun, interesting incidents uh, with with my life owning owning dogs, showing dogs, uh, going to obedience trials, and things like that. Uh, uh, but all this time for several years now, I've been 
befriending people around the world who are interested in English cockers. Maybe they just have one pet or they show or they have a, they have an English Springer fan with that, that they show. And so I've been building this up and, and uh, I also have created a couple of, uh, of um, groups on Facebook. Uh, I have a English Cocker Spaniels in dog sports. And okay. uh, we just hit our two year anniversary. I think there are about 600 members around the world, mostly the United States, but uh, around the world in mostly English speaking countries. But it's amazing how many people in like European countries speak well, English. And you, and you see what's happening is that is that you're you were just consistently showing up and folks were joining these groups and they were connecting with you. And, and again, what Sylvia is referring to for Michelle and Carolyn, um, earlier in one of my other calls, I said, try to put together about 10 posts. And then when you go live, publish your first 10 posts all at once. And here's why I said that is that if, if you find an article that you really like and you think, oh, who is this person? I love this. And you click over and, and they're a one-time wonder, you, you maybe have a tendency not to register because you're thinking, who who wrote this? Is this just, is this it? Is this all they have is this one? And so, but if you go over and you see that it is a platform and they have at least 10, you start to get the flavor of who they are and what they're about. And that's what makes you want to follow them. So okay. I recommended that when you get ready to launch um, to have about 10 blog posts ready to go. Oh, I see what you mean, publish them all at once. Yes, publish the first 10 all at once, uh, because that way when now you only need to maybe sprinkle one out across your social media since you've got those groups, because when they click on that and it takes them back to your blogging platform, they'll see the other nine. But have them published on your platform so that you have a little bit of a footprint already on your platform that you are a blogger. OK, and um I'm, I, yeah, I've had all kinds of things in mind I and other things I've done. So there are literally thousands of people who know who I am uh, that are interested in this little niche, you know, and, and also, you know, just people who have pet dogs that yeah. want, want to read interesting stories. So I have a much wider audience than this person who had a calm in the, English Cocker Spaniel Club of America. It's a little magazine that was maybe you know, a few hundred people, and uh, I I also had a my dog who unfortunately just passed away had a uh, has her own Facebook page, and I I soon found out that um, Facebook has a has a thing where they will uh, they will let more. You Make Memorialize posts. a page, yeah. They will let you make posts for free on a page for a while, and then they start charging you. And for a while, you can do free posts. And if you pay the money, they will promote it for you. Uh, but I've gotten to the point where they will no longer post anything free. So I had the the page was called the English American Princess. And so I created another group that's called Friends of the English American Princess. And I've done all my posting on there. I'm not posting on the web on the page anymore because that's for business. And since I'm not making any money, I don't have much money. Uh, I'm just not post, but it's still there. And uh, I have uh, approached the possibility of having a, a t-shirt because there are all these people that, oh, this poor dog that I've been reading about, she's now she died. And so I put up a, a group of uh, pictures that I really like. And I, I've asked people, um, would you buy a t-shirt would you uh which which uh which of these you'd like the best or is there some other one that i published on the group that you like and uh so i'm 
I'm waiting. You know, I've only did that, I think, yesterday, the day, yes. day before. So I'm just waiting for this to come in to see what. Uh, Sylvia, uh, you I, are just, you are way ahead of us. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Good for you. Yeah, I, I've, I've kind of done it backwards. I'm, I'm building the audience, the following, uh, before I, uh, and, oh, and there are a couple other Facebook pages on English cockers where I, without even trying, I just, I've become like the number one or number two contributor uh, just because I enjoy it. And uh, so, you know, there are a lot of people who know my name already. Well, so, good for you. You know, so when good. I, yeah, thank you so much for sharing all of that. Carolyn, does that give you some inspiration to, to move forward? Seeing sure. what Sylvia's Sure. I'm going to be going to Florida for the winter here uh, next week. And um I'm flying down next week. Where are you going? Fort Myers. Uh, you're, we're right above you. We're at Sarasota. Okay. Well, um, I know you're going to have three more of these, right? Three more yeah. sessions. Well, so. yes, and we're going to finish out the year, um, but we're going to continue on in uh, in in 2024. Uh, there's going to be a little bit of a different format, but here's go go to uh, just kathybenner.com and there's a calendar calend link in there. Okay, um, and go there and 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 click on the calendar, and you'll see all of our dates when we're going to be okay. Uh, and and the link to get into the call and all of that. So uh, just go to kathybenner.com and go to the calendar link. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Um, we are at the top of the hour. We're actually a little bit over. Uh, Linda, did you want to share a little bit about what you have coming up before we go? Oh, well, thank you for that. Um, one of the things that we talk about in my Legacy of Love Project course is um, your all kinds of properties and things that you have and what you want to make your heirs aware of. But we go into a bunch of depth about digital assets, which all of us have. I mean, if you have even one email account, you have a digital asset. But many of us have uh, photos stored in the cloud. Uh, if we're content creators, and all of us are, we may have a blog site, we may have a website, we may have you know, a Dropbox or something where we're storing, you know, our content and on and on and on. And if something happens to us, you, to me, um, if we haven't taken the right steps in advance, uh, our family may never be able to access those assets. And so this coming Wednesday, October 11th at um, 1 p.m. Eastern time, I'm doing a free workshop um, so that we can talk about some of these things, um, like how vulnerable we really are. We're just walking around blindly and don't even know it. And what are some um, simple steps and important steps that we can take to secure our digital assets? So if you like, Kathy, I can throw that link in the chat. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And once again, it is free. You just go to an Eventbrite uh, page and just give your information. Yeah, basically, you're just going to sign on that, that you want to attend. And that yes. way, Linda, Linda knows that that you are interested. But as you're creating your blogs, and, and like Sylvia, as you're creating all of this, um, you know, you want to be able to, to have access to all of those Facebook groups and all, you know, you've put a lot of your love into all of those posts. And, uh, and that way, this way, you can actually protect those digital assets. You can learn how to do that with Linda. I just think it's an important piece of everything that we're doing. We put so much time and effort into creating everything that I just think it's an important piece to protect it at the other end. Did either of you, Carolyn or Sylvia, have any questions for Linda before we go? And Linda's going to put that link in the chat for everyone. And that way you can just copy it down or screen print it or copy and paste, however you capture that. I don't have any questions. Very good. So the free workshop is ichooseabundance.com forward slash protect dash assets. So I'll well, give you a moment to capture that if anybody wants to copy that, write it down, 
uh, screen print it, however. And uh, just can you say that again? I choose abundance.com. Yep. Forward slash protect hyphen assets. Thank I'll just you. go ahead and share my screen. That's what the, the banner image looks like. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so when you click on it, that's what should come up. And then you just basically register for the class. Now, Linda, I do have one quick question. If for some reason uh, they can't make it once they register, is there a replay? There is, there is, because okay. life is crazy and not everybody is available at 1 p.m. And okay. even if you think you are, you may suddenly not be. So, <laughs> Yeah, so register even if you're slightly interested and that way you'll at least get the replay. So you'll have the information. I just think it's important to, to have that in mind as we start building out all of this content. You know, it's a little too late, you know, at the other end to say, oh my goodness, now how am I going to save all this? Uh -huh. So I love that. All right. Any uh, big aha moments? Uh, again, my aha moment is that I really need to save my digital assets. Um, any other aha moments from uh, from Carolyn or Sylvia? What is the the big thing today that you were like, wow, I didn't know that. Or wow, that's that inspires me. Or wow, that's what I need to do next. Carolyn, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? I think... Um... I think beginning to see how many um, possibilities for connections uh, and affiliate connections there might be even in, um, oh, I'm going to have to go. I'm sorry. Thank, nope, you. thank you. Thank you for being on with us. Yes. All thank right. you so much. Bye. Bye. Sylvia, any aha moment for you today? Uh, yeah. Just uh, all the ways that you could monetize. A blog, okay. and I really had thought about most of them. So, uh, yeah, but I think that uh, there are probably lots of uh, pet food, pet supply companies that might be interested in. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Leashes, harnesses, doggy beds. Oh my gosh, treats. Yeah. Chewy. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, Sylvia, thank you so much for being on with us today. Linda, did you get any aha moments today? I know I always learn something new every every time and I'm the one I'm, I'm supposed to be the teacher and I always learn something new every time as well. Well, the reminder about Google Trends and the reminder about making sure that you have a, a bundle of articles before you launch. I, I thought that was very valuable because you don't want to be one hit wonder. Yeah, perfect. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being on with us, and we will see you again next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.